Thank you. Are we done with that video? Did you start the next one? Started the next one. Hi, I'm Lynn McCauley from <laughs> Syracuse, New York. And tonight I wanted to talk about a couple of things before Christmas. If we remember the true meaning of Christmas and the true gifts that we can give, the holiday spirit should be around giving, gratitude, and grace. And by giving, I mean so many things we can do that says, I, I care, I'm here for you, you matter, I appreciate you, here is my love. You know, I joked last week about the cards, but I always like to write a little note because I think it's one time where I can say to people, I care about you, I, I, we care. And, and uh, you know, also, like Sunday, we got our Sunday all planned out, and my sister says, oh my gosh, Jasper just got this big part in, in a play at, at St. Paul's Lutheran Church uh, where my brother-in-law goes on Sunday. And he said, I really want Aunt Ellen and Uncle Bob there. And I said, we will be there. <laughs> Isn't that Christmas? Yes. To, to yes. see someone, you know, be in a, a, a Christmas play? And, and it just, there's so many ways that we can be there for people. It has nothing to do with a gift. My love for this group has been for your prayers and, 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 and the way we just embrace each other in, in, in so many ways. And, I, and I'm just so grateful for it. And then there's gratitude. I can't tell you how important I think gratitude is. And just to say thank you to Jesus. You know, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. When things go our way, or even when things, you know, aren't exactly what we thought, there's a lesson to be learned. Gratitude says we care. We appreciate people. I'm a big, big proponent of thank you notes. I mean, there's people in this group that say, please don't write me a thank you note. You don't have to. And I said, oh, I know I don't have to. But my mother's 88, and if she ever heard that I did not write you a thank you note, <laughs> She would say, that's the worst thing a mother can say. I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> so, I learned to always be that. And I am. I can whip off a meaningful thank you now in maybe 30 seconds. And it comes from the heart. Because I just know what I want to say. And the last thing is grace. So many people don't even know what grace means. Grace is undeserved help from God. Don't we get grace every day? We are so undeserving, and yet he helps us, helps us, helps us, loves us, loves us, loves us. And, and, and God wants us to be safe, protected, loved, and blessed. He wants what's best for us. Are things going to happen that we don't like? Are people we love going to get COVID or sick? But you turn your eyes to heaven and say, Jesus, I put it in your hands. I trust in you. Your will be done. I'm, I'm counting on you. And then so many of us make New Year's resolutions. And I'm big on that. I make a big long list. You know, I'm going to help create world peace. I'm going to end climate change all by myself. <laughs> I am going to just be the best I can be. I'm going to lose 1,000 pounds. I'm going to win the lottery. I mean, I make all these crazy resolutions. And you know what this Father Tour says? God is pleased when we invite him into our lives and then strive to do his will. If our only New Year's Eve or New Year's resolution is, I want God in my life and I'm going to strive to do his will. If that's our only resolution, everything else will fall into place. Do you know, I don't look back on any of the sins of my youth and say, man, that was great. You ever see like a crack addict who's in recovery saying, man, I love being a crack addict. It was the best thing I ever did. Or I loved being so drunk I wound up in a gutter and getting a DWI. God wants what's best for us because it's what's best for us. So if we just say, I want him in my life and I want to strive to do his will, everything else will fall into place. And I really, really want to do that. But here's the big kicker. Love you, Lord God, with all your strength, all your might, all your will. 
We can say we can do that, but then we're supposed to love our neighbor. And there's a lot of neighbors that are a little hard to love. And I always say, and I'll say it again, I'd be the perfect Christian if it wasn't for the people. It's the people, you know? And we need, and I need, just to work on that. And I went and did my Advent confession, and I don't think it's telling tales to say, I had the most awesome priest at the cathedral. It was so funny, because we get 2.15 breaks a day, and I've never taken one in the 10 years I've been there. So I said to my boss, you know, I'm going to get my, my 15 minute break. And she goes, oh my gosh, have you ever taken one? I don't know. I said, but I, I want to go over to the cathedral and go to confession. She goes, is that enough time? I go, what do you mean, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> we laughed for five minutes. It was the funniest thing. So I, she says, I don't know how long you take. Oh my gosh, you know, you're perfect. Get out of your So I literally like chariots of fire. I'm like, da -da 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 -da. And I said that, you know, I don't even tell tales out of school. I said, uh, you know, that I struggle loving everyone all the time, loving my neighbor. And I said, but I'm a lot better at it at 67 than I was at 18, 19, 20, on and up. And he goes, that's a beautiful thing. He goes, you're going to struggle till God calls you home. We all do. And that's, if we do it more, if we're better, and pray it all helps me. I am so happy with Pray It All that I, I find people's foibles more amusing because I can't wait to tell the group about it. I find stories in it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I can't wait to tell the group. I'm going to stop right there.